Jump off that exhausting hamster wheel and into balanced living with Dr. Marissa. I promise you joy in the mystery. Dr. Marissa, also known as the Asian Oprah. Her mission, to be a beneficial presence on the planet. Her purpose, to be your personal advocate to live, laugh, love, learn. Her life motto, don't die wondering. Take back your life with Dr. Marissa Pay. And welcome. You are tuned in to Take My Advice. I'm not using it. Get balanced with Dr. Marissa the morning show here on KCAA AM 1050, FM 102.3, FM 106.5, and everywhere streaming, including my YouTube channel and iHeartRadio and Spotify, Stitcher, and KCAARadio.com. And this is a show about hope and happiness. So there's no gossip, no scandal, and no, uh, (laughs) I used to say K words, Kardashian talk. But uh, I understand that Kim's doing some really nice things, including something for one of my friends. So I won't say that. But the point of that is always that I want you to focus on your own reality show so you can be happy 88% of the time and quit looking at other people's stuff that really makes no difference to you, cannot help you be happy 88% of the time because it is an inside out job. (sighs) I think my tongue got the better of me there. But uh, anyways, I'm so happy that you're still here. You're still tuned in to my hashtag positively opinionated self. I know that we're all doing the very best that we can. And that thanks to my promotion, I'm now on every morning from eight to nine. So I get you early to get you to drink my rose colored Kool-Aid. And speaking of which, I know the Delta variant is out there. I know that it is a drag to have to wear the mask again indoors, but it works. We have now direct correlation between vaccines, numbers go down. Masks, numbers go down. No masks, no max vaccines. The overwhelming majority of people who are getting COVID now Delta variant and normal variant are those who are not vaccinated, not wearing masks, not social distancing. So please, 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 let's not, you know, throw the baby out with the bathwater or cut off our nose to spite our face. We are, we really are coming towards the end. And it's funny, it's like a psychological phenomena. Like everybody was behaving pretty much before and now when you see the light at the end of the tunnel is not that of an oncoming train it's like everybody's <laughs> uh patience is snapping uh airline episodes of unruliness is up 600 times like come on folks we can do this just chill take a breath with me and release uh, soft shoulders, soft elbows, soft knees. Another deep breath in. Releasing all uh, the stories and the drama. Ah, and one more deep breath in. Connecting with me through Chi Eternal Energy, the breath of life. We are going to get through this, but everybody has to just maintain their breath. Breathe. Don't hold your breath. Breathe. <laughs> Please, I, I've never seen more incidents of road rage. I've never seen so many fingers uh, driving since there's more people on the freeway, myself included, and I just have to keep breathing. So just breathe with me. Give yourself a break. Remember, you do get 12% to behave badly. You're only 88% fabulous. So 12% of the time you can misbehave and cut yourself some slack, but the majority of the time, please, 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 I'm I'm begging, this is your public service <laughs> announcement, let's just try to just hang on and chill, okay? And to help you with that, I'm starting again. In fact, today is day one of the 21-day fast from complaining with Dr. Marissa. Those of you who have been following me for a while, I started that fast July 1st, 2011. After uh, listening to this fabulous speaker on the Agape International Spiritual Center stage, 
Edwin Gaines, and she said, if you want to achieve spiritual transcendence, then you might want to stop complaining for 21 days. And I love a challenge. So that's when I started with 40 people. We're now at thousands and thousands. Uh, I, I think we're over 18,000 now worldwide. And uh, I used to do it every single month. And then because of the book going number one, Eight Ways to Happiness from Wherever You Are and doing more motivational speaking and being on tour and traveling to Philippines and China and uh, Europe and all of that good stuff, I had to had to stop doing it every month. But every once in a while, we have a new round. And I was uh, happy to be a guest on Head Over Heels, a show originating out of Canada. And this lovely couple uh, asked me to do a special Instagram live yesterday for the 21 Day Fast because the podcast released. So you can get that just look have head over heels podcast and you'll see my interview with them, but it was a good reason to start up the fast again. So if you'd like to formally join and start a good life habit called the 21 day fast from complaining, then go to my website, drmarissa.life, go to the shop and put your money where your mouth is. It's $21 to a good cause nonprofit eight ways to happiness to register for the 21 day fast. And then if you are able to consecutively not complain for 21 days on our system, then I will double your money and give you $42 back. If you're not able to do it, it goes to a good cause. My nonprofit that helps kids, teens, and young adults who have temporarily forgotten their birthright to happiness. So you can find all that on my website, drmarissa.life. Please do this. There is a warning label. Uh, if you try this fast, you may experience more joy, more laughter, more fun, better relationships, and better sex. I actually had someone tell me that, that they tried the fast and uh, their wife was absolutely more uh, what is the word? Um, irresistible <laughs> when she was not <laughs> complaining. So yes, it is a good cause. It's a great life habit. It takes 21 days to formulate a good habit, 21 days to get rid of a bad habit. So I am happy to help in this effort for all of us on the planet to really uh, focus on things we can change. The reality shows that we are, uh, including our ability to find the good instead of complaining about the bad. Because Lord knows if every morning, if that's how you're starting the day, scrolling on your phone like this, you are not helping. You are uh, continuing our bad habit of complaining, our national uh, pastime for many Americans, you stand in line at the store, you're complaining, maybe not as much through the mask, but you're complaining about something. And that just adds to the negative, low vibration energy that's all around. And if we want more happiness and more joy, which is tied to more creativity and more innovation, then we really, really, really have to do what we can. And the 21 day fast from complaining with Dr. Marissa, hashtag no complaints or hashtag 21 day fast, then we are part of the solution. And I'm, I know that it's going to make you feel better. So that's my PSA for happiness <laughs> today. And I'm delighted to tell you that for the rest of this show, I have just a brilliant interview with a very special, I don't even know how he found me, but uh, Mark Pulver has a new book out. It's called Living with Autism. He has autism and has just uh, become one of my favorite people because of his attitude, of his seeing his diagnosis as a, a good thing. And so if you are a parent of an autistic child, if you have autism yourself, if you are um, uh, wondering how you can support the autism community, then all of the above, you'll want to listen and come back and uh, get to know just a delightful uh, young 
youngish <laughs> man, Mark Pulver, who will be back. So you want to keep it tuned here to take my advice. I'm not using it. Get balanced with Dr. Marissa, the morning show here on KCAA, the station that leaves no listener behind. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Well, thank you again. It's an honor and a privilege to be here. Thank you so much for having me again on the second time on this show. I'm glad I'm here. I am so glad you are here too. And for those of you who missed the first time that Mark was on with me, we just did a little teaser uh, mini soundbite interview. Mark is uh, an author. He has a book out, Living, uh, author of Living with autism and we're going to actually get to into a little more depth with that book and i'm excited to explore it with mark so let's start at the first chapter and it's called blue baby arrives so i'm guessing that you were blue but please tell me about that basically you're born with lack of oxygen and not being able to breathe at birth, and I think I almost died. I, it was pretty seriously. I was in like I think in the hospital for maybe uh, three three weeks or or so. So that was the first time, and that was definitely known that there was a, a problem at at birth. Just basically the severity of it growing forward. Nobody really knew until like maybe a few years later when I wasn't developing at the same development rate rate as uh, other kids were. So your mom didn't have any issues during pregnancy, correct? Not that I'm aware of, no. Okay. And there's is there any history of autism in your family? Uh, none. There is no other issues probably but autism okay. is, uh, is the only is the only thing uh that i have and no other family members that i know of has anything to do with either autism or asperger's well you did not have a sufficient oxygen so there was some damage to your brain because of that right and uh as a domino effect uh, to that, in basically all areas, when it came to speech, motor skills, thought processes, uh, action, move, uh, movements uh, of my body were not quite like the other kids at the basically the same rate as you could possibly uh, tell I was gonna become a, a late bloomer as right. far as that's concerned, uh, affected concern. That was that's chapter one, which is kind of cool because it gives you the the background right of your beginning. Now, right. do you have brothers and sisters? I have two brothers. And they're older or younger? Both older. I'm the I'm the youngest. Oh, brother. so you're the baby. <laughs> so now the second chapter is fears, fascinations, and memories. That sounds very uh, interesting. Okay. Uh, tell me about that. My fears were of loud noise uh, and uh, animals and water being uh, thrown into water. Those are my favorite, though those are my three fears. My fascinations were uh, uh, dreams and uh, run stairs. I love to run up and down stairs and going into an elevator I used to call an elevator a magical uh, uh, room because you go into the elevator, you're in one place. When the door opens up, you're just magically in another place. At that age, I had really, really no concept that the elevator either goes up or it goes down. Some three fascinations are elevators, stairs, and dreams. And dreams was just like basically 
you go to sleep, as I put it, and you go into a different life, a different uh, dimension, reality through space and time, so to speak. Do you follow what I'm saying? I'm following, and I have a, a, an important question for you. You've listed three fears, three fascinations. Those were when you were young. Uh, yeah. Did, so do you still hold the same three fears, the same three fascinations? Do you still love getting into elevators? Actually, now that you mention that, one of my fascinations from elevators has turned into fears. So, cause I actually got stuck in one like maybe over 20 years ago and it was not fun. So, uh, however, certain elevators, I don't mind going into like where I lived uh, in, 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 uh, in South Florida before I moved out here. Interesting. Tell me about your school days and uh, what, what some of the highlights or lowlights were of that. Well, in my elementary, in my K-12 school years, there really weren't that many fun highlights. It was just basically, I had no comprehension of what was going on, being made fun of, ridiculed, uh, teased, not being able to uh, fit in scholastically or socially, had a very, very hard time sitting still, taking uh, uh, direction. I just basically had no idea or no comprehension just like like the, the other kids around me well i'm sorry that that happened to you that that sounds like a horrible horrific yeah. time i was put in a different uh curriculum in a uh, private school and things began to get just a little better but i still felt out of place mm. you know, like just basically a fish out of water, still didn't have the scholastic, the, the, compre the comprehension skills. If you're wondering who I've been talking to, it is Mark Pulver, and he's a repeat guest. He is the author of Living Life with Autism, and he's been telling us a little bit about the first half of his book. We're going to come back after the break with more with Mark Pulver. You are tuned in to take my advice. I'm not using it. Get balanced with Dr. Marissa the morning show and we will be right back don't go away and we're back and you are tuned in to take my advice i'm not using it get balanced with dr marissa the morning show and i have mark pulver here as my guest today and he's talking about his life in his book called living with autism mark pulver welcome back to the show so school we left it on school was not the best experience so i'm gonna ask um your opinion for parents i know you get to that in the last chapter but i just want to preview what your advice is to parents who have children with autism do you believe it's better off to keep kids in the public system where they are uh sort of subject to a lot of ridicule and a lot of pain and hurt and a lot of frustration or should they go to private school i feel that the parents needs to look at the severity of the situation and uh, if the child comes home upset, very, very uh, troubled, it's obvious, should be obvious to the parent that uh, that is not the perfect conducive environment for the child to begin with. So either a couple of things, do some homeschool or private uh, uh, tutoring uh, uh, separately and just find a place where there are uh, kids in the same situation don't don't keep feet sending him back you know into the lion's den that's that's my synopsis on this did you have teachers that also made fun of you on top uh, of the kids uh, no i've heard stories but i've had teachers lose their patience with me just by being agitated because they did not know how to deal with me and I guess I can see uh, both both sides of it. You know, I guess some teachers do not have the com uh, compassion 
that they should, but looking on the other side of the coin, I was in the class with like 30 or 40 other uh, kids. And how can you not uh, lose your patience when, when you're just one uh, teacher and you have to monitor 30 or 40 kids? Mm -hmm. So just basically, I get that. I really do. I get that. That's very, that's very big of you and very compassionate of you. And you're very bright. You're so thoughtful. And I guess the question I have, and this is sort of, I, I didn't warn you about this question, but it's come to me as we're talking. Did you ever, did I ask you if you had seen that movie, Awakening? Awakening, I don't think I did. Yeah. Okay. But one of the things that struck me was how frustrating it was for the individual with the diagnosis because they knew they were smarter, they, they could think clearly, but to express what they were thinking was difficult. Do you, do you identify with that? Do you feel like you're sort of in there? Do you get frustrated with yourself? Yes, uh, that is definitely, I'm glad uh, you know that you made mention of that. So definitely, I could not express that what I was thinking uh, and feeling at all. No comprehension to express the bullying the teasing, the ridiculing, and invalidations. And on top of that, not being able to comprehend uh, the teacher screaming at you, sit down, sit down. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So let me just talk to my listeners for a second, Mark, if you wouldn't mind. I'm going to look straight in the camera. If you're listening right now and you uh, have a BS belief, system that people with autism or people who are developmentally disabled have no feelings or they just it's just too much trouble or they belong somewhere where you know there's special treatment but they don't belong in the system uh, i would challenge everyone to really think about how tough it is for that individual to know that there's something that it makes them non-mainstream. They want to be able to express just like mainstream, but they cannot. And how horrific that must be on a day-to-day -day basis. And to for us to have a little more compassion and a lot more patience than we do, I, I really believe there's an opportunity. That's why I'm, I, I wanted you on my show. I wanted... Uh, an opportunity for all of us, you know, I'm all about being humankind. And I think that, you know, there's more and more people with autism, there's more and more parents affected, that we as a people, as humankind, need to be better understanding and way more compassionate than we are right now. So thank you for letting me do that public service announcement. <laughs> and I and I'm preaching to the choir because I get impatient. I get I want you know I want the, I want you to understand me. I want I, I want to understand you. But you know the reality is this is just is, and it's a difference that we also have to value and respect. All right, now let's get back to your book, Tough Teenage Years and Living in the Real World. Take it away. Okay. Tough teenage years, now we're getting really down to the <laughs> gritty now. Thinking about what their girl, what, what girls are like, what their you no, know, what what dating is like. I'm heading into a whole new different level of my development, basically. Mm -hmm. And also wanting to learn uh to drive and to be more independent. And I did start to make friends, people that actually that I was able to uh relate to just we would just like ride bikes together you know go down to the mall or to like uh 7-eleven to get a soda pop or like on the friday night going to the bowling alley they had pool tables there sometimes we bowl sometimes we shoot pool eat at the snack bar at that time we're talking about uh early to mid 70s they had like game rooms where you have the uh the pinball um, uh, machine that I just started to do what normal kids do. Like for instance, get into a little uh, mischief like on top on my apartment building, we would just like take eggs and water balloons and throw them, hit one of the security guards on the head. And it's just like, I didn't sit down for a week after that. <laughs> one, you know? 
let all kids get get, get into mischief. <laughs> so, so you got in trouble. I thought yeah. I thought when you said I couldn't sit down for a week that you were laughing so hard you couldn't sit down, but you got you got paddled. <laughs> I did get I did get you know into, uh, I did get into uh, some trouble. One of my best teen years is uh, when uh, I went I I got a job my my first job washing dishes at a restaurant, and then uh, I had an urge you know to buy a motor. A, a motorcycle that was the thing back in the back in those days motorcycles and and and, and go karts people would be coming down the streets with them i you i and you'd hear them going in the bikes and the motor cars and that's so i so uh oh i got a hundred dollars let me see if i can get a motorcycle so i'm walking in the neighbor uh, neighborhood just basically looking at at, at bikes they have they ha uh one guy that I that I ran into, I bought an old uh, motorcycle. He just basically had a beard that just basically almost touched touched the floor, and he just looks like he was one of those uh, throwback druggies uh, from the '60s. Now, thinking about that, uh, I was a person who would like to do for others, and at like uh, 12 years old, I'm gonna back up a few years. One uh, one of the hippies said to me, hey, man, do you have any bread? So you know what I did? I was like two blocks from my house. I went and I got a couple of loaves of bread, put it in a little baggie and gave it to him. He looked at me and goes, no, man, not that kind of bread, man. The green, man. And I'm like, green? And I said, wait a minute, green? Where can I'm thinking? Where can I find green green bread? Oh my, that's funny. So just thinking about that. So let me get back on uh, track. Sorry, I got off, off track. <laughs> that's that. okay. So then, uh, I bought this bike from this old gentleman, like fifties, sixties, uh, who had a beard, and it looks. Uh, he kind of reminded me in a way of, of Moses, the beard down uh, to the floor, mm -hmm. and I and I rode it to my friend's house and the basically his eyes popped out of his head. Where did you get that? So we figured out how to get it uh, to work. We got one of those six fold battery. You know, he was basically mechanically inclined. He was able to put it uh, together. And then uh, we went on the bike together forgetting about the helmet and the cop stopped us. And oh. then he just basically uh, uh, says, boys, do you know it's against the law to ride a bike without a helmet? Oh, I'm so sorry, officer. So we were able to sweet talk our way out of that. So this is basically one of my memorable moments, you know, better moments of uh, growing up and getting into my uh, uh, teen years. But still, I, I still got into mischief. A an angel, I was not. Mm -hmm. Did, and your poor mom, <laughs> I bet your mom was happy that those teenage years were over. Uh, yes, I, prob I probably added from that my teenage years, I probably added 20 years to her life. Basically. Probably. What probably. she had to put up with. Yes. Now, yes. then you went and traveled with them. Tell me about that. Oh, we went to Australia for my 30th birthday. How wonderful. Oh, that was so fun for my uh, 30th uh, birthday. Flown first first class. I get in the plane, you know, and it's just like, am I dreaming regular dishes in first class? Because usually in coach, and back at that time, you used you used to get meals. They don't do that now, but they used to uh, uh, feed you uh, even in coach. They don't do that now. But on first class, they're serving us champagne wow and they're like wow which way is the pearly gates this must be heaven. <laughs> and steak and chocolate layer cake with chocolate ice cream and whipped cream you're making me hungry now after after <laughs> that after that flight i said to my father i will uh i i will never fly 
another way again, but for <laughs> class. So are you going to pay for it next time? <laughs> <I've asked>? yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's and funny. Going, going to Aust Australia, driving on the left hand hand side of the ro uh, road is That's basically a fun, a, f uh, a fun time. You did know, you see it, kangaroos and koalas and all of that good stuff? I, I did, but unfortunately, I never did have a strip on the bobby like people were talking about. Uh huh. I was always looking, where can I get a shrimp on the bloody bobby? You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Where else did you go with your parents? Oh, we went all over flow, uh, you know, uh, not, you know, uh, within the States and to, and to Europe. I have a funny story going into uh, to, to Europe. I'll try to be brief because I know that we're heading out of, going to run out of time soon, you know. Getting it, my father, I flew from uh, Miami to, uh, uh, from Miami to uh, uh, Munich, Germany. And uh, my father ordered me an automatic car, but unfortunately there were no automatic cars. So there were only stick shifts. I never drove a stick shift in my life. So when I got into one, there was a guy next to me, and obviously, by the looks of me, he knew that I was American. Because when I tried, you, you know, when I tried to uh, to step, you know, to push uh, uh, the the gear, uh, the gear, the thing went, arr, arr, <laughs> and then the guy next to me uh, says, uh, "Bunk off, bunk off." You have to step on the clutch, Dunkoff. And then I go, yeah, ya bol, ya bol, danke Shane, ya bol. <laughs> and uh, at that time, it was a blizzard. GPS did not exist. So mm -hmm. I had to rely on a map that was given to me. And I had to drive like eight hours to meet my friend from Munich into a... Uh, Switzerland. So that was a harrowing experience all in itself. I bet. Yeah. I, I had a similar experience. I did not know how to uh, drive a clutch. All I knew is that, is that you went, uh, uh, so I was in a parking lot for four hours trying to figure it out. <laughs> so I, I feel you. I feel you. Now, the second last chapter is called, It Hit Me Like a Ton of Bricks. So I don't want you to give the whole book away. So give us a little teaser from that chapter. Okay. Wow. Most people would think of a disability as a negative. But for me, it was a positive. How can I be autistic when I've already done so many amazing things? I'm going to do something with this. I'm going to write a book. And other people are just thinking, oh, yeah, sure you are. Sure you are. Keep dreaming. And I'm like, oh, yes, I'm not only dreaming, but I'm going to do it. And that's why we're here talking right, right now. Absolutely. I love it that you are you are the quintessential example of i am not my diagnosis and you say autism like it's a bad thing i love the fact that you just said that it's not a bad thing it's actually a good thing and for that i'm giving you i can't remember if i gave you this award last time but i'm giving you just in case i didn't last time dr marissa's beneficial presence on the planet award <laughs> And I don't give that to all my guests. I'm giving that to you because you, you live your life. You don't let the label of autism uh, stop you from living an amazing life. You wrote a book. So I don't want to hear anything about anybody's excuses on why they can't do things. <laughs> because uh, I'm going to point you to Mark. He has done so much with his life and continuing. How how young are you now? I'm 63 years uh, 
young and I'm getting younger every day. There you go. There's that smile. <laughs> Wonderful. Now, the last chapter is, I think, uh, one of the most important contributions that you can make. Uh, just like I had a guest, Greg O'Brien, on who wrote a book um, on Pluto. Uh, he has early onset Alzheimer's and he wrote about Alzheimer's from the inside out from his own experiences. And you write about living with autism from the inside out. But your last chapter is advice for parents who have autistic children. And I think that's an amazing, important topic to talk about and to understand from your point of view. So take it away. Okay, basically uh, try as best you can if you're able to communicate with them. What are they thinking about their situations? Uh, what are they doing about that? What are they thinking? What are they uh, uh, feeling about that? And why are they feeling about that? No, let them explain to you in the best way they can and see if you can understand what they're coming from and uh, give them uh, a remedy for what they actually uh, need, whether it's some uh, uh, coaching, reass uh, reassured, some kind of an acting learning tool to help them out of their negative situation or just basically out to help them out of their uh, di dilemma to basically set them on the right path in life, just basically some good learning advice, some good uh, learn, uh, lear learning tools. It's unfortunately that when uh, children are born, you're not given uh, a man. guide word. It's just basically uh, instinct and uh, common sense, you know, teaching them right from wrong, good values, good in life, good social upbringing, good basically etiquette and a good moral. Uh, compass to which uh they can use as their guide as they go through life uh, mm -hmm. and life uh, uh going going forward what were some of the things that your mom said to you that were helpful and helped you believe in yourself oh you can do anything you want to if you want it uh, uh bad enough uh there's nothing out of reach if you really want it we're uh work work for it you know uh, I, I, you know, my, uh, my mother was just basically very, very uh, uh, forceful. She would not be denied. She did not want to be denied of her kid having a normal life. No, my father was just basically more accepting. He just basically accepted what I can do. My mother, on the uh, other hand, you know, was more powerful and motivational towards me, my, my upbringing and my success. And uh, I have her to thank for uh, the success that I have. Well, it's it's both of ours doing. I worked for it, but she just basically gave me the tools, you know, that I that I needed and, and a good, uh, you know, and, and just basically a little bit of tough love with that. It definitely paid, paid off. Mm -hmm. What what are some of the tough love things she said to you? Well, she's not going to do things uh, for me. I'm going to have to figure things out and do things, you know, on 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 my on my own, and just and 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 just basically strong in her beliefs of what I should and what I sh I should I shouldn't be doing, and just you know. Ex explaining the same thing over and over until it just basically uh, 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 sunk in and just made sure that I basically had a good understanding of life and a moral compass just basically how to treat others and communication is w one of her pet peeves was very important that I learned, you know, which I'm working, working hard at. Good communication is something that she's always strive for me you know, to do is to always be a good communicator. I've had issues in the past with communications. That was one of her pet peeves. You know, and, and right. And, and what would she what would she work on with you so that you were a better communicator? She would say, "Okay, 
re repeat that again. Let's try. Let's try that again. Or you didn't li you you didn't listen to the question. Uh, you didn't you didn't you didn't hear the qu hear the question. She'd say, uh, "Listen, listen, listen." Listen to what I'm saying. You didn't answer the uh, the question. Listen to exactly what I'm saying. That's how uh, she would do. That's great. That is yeah. real good practical advice for parents who are who might get extremely frustrated trying to teach their kids anything. I mean, you don't have to have a diagnosis to have that frustration with children. But I really like what you just said about repetition obviously some level of patience and and uh taking a deep breath over and over and over again but it has it your mom deserves an award for sure she can share her you can tell her that uh, she also gets dr marissa's beneficial presence on the planet award because she did a great job with you i wish you all the luck with your book and uh i i wanted to wait until this segment was over and i'm going to put you in touch with uh, my publisher morgan james and see uh, what they think of the book and and good luck with that okay thank you very much i was really happy to be on here and any time i'll be happy to be on again i really enjoyed these two two segments i really did and i'm always good. honored to be here good and i'm just delighted to have you again as a great example you've been listening to mark Pulver, the author of Living with Autism, and he is not just living with autism, but thriving with autism. Please go pick up his book, and you can, how, how do they find your book to buy it? Amazon.com, however, I think there's just a few copies. I am going to have to find another publisher because I don't think that there are that many copies uh, uh, left. However, I can get them a book on doc form if they want to hit me up on Facebook, Succeeding with Autism, and I'll be happy to explain to them. The PDF form, I'll definitely uh, help if you, I'm going to give one away, actually, if you don't mind, as an Asian Oprah giveaway on the show, and I'll buy it from you and give it away to the first person that goes to drmarissa.life and puts in living with autism and uh, you'll get a free pdf pdf copy of the book courtesy of dr marissa last question i usually ask to who or what are you most grateful to or for i would have to say uh my mother for working uh most of my life to get me to the point of completely independence. That was her number one goal in life, to make sure that I'm completely 100% independent. And that's what I'm grateful for, that she worked for me to get me to this place in my life. And I'm very, very happy and thankful uh, to her. And I want her to know that. Ah, oh, beautiful. You live uh, on your own in your apartment? Yes, I live in Santa Clarita, just like 20 miles north of L.A. And how long have you lived on your own? About two years. I was basically on my own, you know, but I depended on my mother, I think, a little more when I was living down in South Florida where she lives. But now I'm just basically flying solo. I just left the nest, but I do go back often for, uh, for visits because we are very, very close. Mm. You're able to just share beautiful moments, whether it's on the phone, in person, on on, on Zoom, etc. Just be able to share beautiful moments together, and I think I cherish them more more now, uh, knowing that my heart is a lot more open now than it ever was. That's so beautiful. So in your independence, you even feel more love and more connection. That's beautiful. I do. The connection is just so much greater. You can really uh, see the light, you know, like to see the light from the from the tree. That's beautiful. Well, I so thank you for that. That's it for today. Thank you so much for joining. You've been listening to Mark Paul for the author of Living with Autism. You can get his book on Amazon or in PDF form. You can contact me and I'll get you in touch with him. 
I hope you enjoy knowing what is good, what is right with you, with me, and humankind with the emphasis on kind. This is Dr. Marissa reporting live, reminding you that it's all about balance. Peace in, peace out, world peace through inner peace. And don't forget, have the best day ever. We'll see you tomorrow. tuned into my weekly talk radio tv show called take my advice i'm not using it get balanced and get happy with dr marissa And this show is about hope and happiness. So there's no gossip, no scandal. <laughs> Instead, I want you to focus on your own reality show and how you can be happy 88% of the time. So I have shows and topics. Sunday, Monday, happy days. Tuesday, Wednesday, happy days. Thursday, Friday, happy days. Monday, Tuesday, happy days. Wednesday, Thursday, happy days. Friday, whatever, happy days. What a day. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> Best known as the mom from Happy Days. And she is a delightful 89 year young Marion Ross to my studio. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Dr. Marissa, <laughs> this is such a treat for me. Oh. My goodness, you're a wonderment. which is exactly the kind of guest that I like. Those who have gone through life, good and bad, and then taken those experiences to alchemize them into the person they are now and doing good on the planet. I'd like you to welcome Corey Feldman. If you're grateful for it and you say right away, thank you, God, oh my God, it's so beautiful, I'm so blessed, thank you, thank you, thank you, then guess what? More good things will come to you. Does this sound familiar at all? <laughs> <laughs> She's back again to mark my Cancer Awareness and Prevention Month show. Please welcome Fran Drescher. Woo! Hi, I'm Fran. I'm supporting Cancer Schmance. I really yeah. appreciate it. So what would you say are some of the biggest myths, Fran, that people have about cancer? Well, I would say that they think that there's a cure for it. <laughs> okay. Instead of a cause for it. is the first call-in show when I get to be Dr. Marissa, the kinder, gentler Dr. Laura. And uh, people call in to get their life tires balanced and their critical thinking or their BS, their belief systems, smog checked. And today I am delighted to have Malie calling in from Birmingham, Alabama. We could go 90 days and end up having terrible sex. And then you say, well, the relationship's not all about sex. Well, if I'm not getting great sex from you, then I'm going to get it from somebody else. Right? That moose just got put on the table. <laughs> 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 and I see Josh and Jim. I have to agree You're with both nodding, nodding, nodding. Ramon's sort of half nodding because his wife's listening. <laughs> <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> I understood what was going to happen if I, Muhammad Ali's youngest daughter, made public that I was going to become a boxer. So mm -hmm. I, I wanted to make sure this was the path that I wanted to go down. You are absolutely fabulous, beautiful inside and out. And I'm giving you Dr. Mercer's Beneficial Presence on the Planet Award today. Thank you. Duh.
does sit right back and you'll hear a tale, a tale of a fateful trip that started from this topic point. When I go, I'm gone. Are you lonely? No. No, I knew that was going to be But I, I surround myself with people. I mean, I'm always the one cooking for things. Right? I'm always the one that decorates first and come to my house. All the orphans would have no place. I'm going to have no place to go so okay. I can come Okay, over. come on over. <laughs> and life is so amazing if we can see it.